And now from McAllen City Hall, a meeting of the McAllen City Commission. Hi, good evening everybody. Today we have a joint meeting with PUB. We'll open up the meeting and we open up our meeting for the McAllen Public Utility Board. Roy, what do we have? So uh, PUB's got a resolution uh, for a uh, loan that they're going to be taking from the Texas Water Development Board. And it's um, okay with the City Commission. We've got an ordinance to approve. So we've got the general manager of PUB. Right. So, Mayor, the first time going to be a resolution. That's the $18 million loan for Water Development Board. And the second, I believe it's B, is for city commissioners to approve for the for the, the ordinance. So PUB will be, will be approving the, um, the, uh, the resolution, and then city commission will be approving the ordinance. So we do have uh, Ms. Ann Berger and can hear uh, our financial advisor from Hilltop. Securities to make a presentation on the loans, and again, this is 18 million. Real quick. Yes, sir. Yes, Mayor, it is. And uh, again, this is for the AMI, um, which is a smart meter, the digital meter project for the city of McAllen. And just before that, I just wanted to uh, thank Melba Carvajal, who is our director of finance for utilities, that heads up the AMI, the steering committee, uh, with our staff that has put in a lot of work and a lot of hours creating the uh, RFP to solicit for these uh, the smart meter project. So with that, I'll hand the mic over to Ann berger -Entrican. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Ann. Honorable Mayor and Commissioners, Honorable Chairman and Trustees, thank you so much for the opportunity to be before you today. As Mr. Vega said, I'm Ann berger -Entrican with Hilltop Securities, and I serve as your financial advisor. I have just a couple of slides that I thought might be helpful as we approach um, the items that you will be considering today. I thought it would be helpful to just start off with a market update. And what this is, is the bond buyers index of 20 municipal bonds. And this is an economic indicator that comes out every Thursday. And this is clearly not the rate that you have, and we'll talk about that later. But the mm -hmm. most recent rate we had was a 2.26%. And this is an aggregation of a group of 20 municipal entities and what their rate would have been if they had issued bonds this week. I think it's important to put this rate into perspective. This is the exact same chart that goes all the way back uh, for 25 years. And I think it's important for us to know from a historical interest rate perspective what a low, historically low interest rate environment we are in. We are probably within about 10 to 15 basis points from what would be the all-time low. Moving on to the particular issue for your consideration, it is 18 million Waterworks and Sewer System Revenue Bonds Series 2021. And just to put in perspective, unlike the, this is a program that you were doing with the Texas Water Development Board, and unlike their SRF program, which you have utilized before, that is based on what your ratings are, and you have very high ratings, AA plus AA. But the way this is the SWERF program, and the way that that works is your interest rate is based on the Texas Water Development Board's cost of funds. And they are AAA, AAA for this program. So the true interest cost that we have for your consideration today is 1.55. And basically what the Water Development Board did is they sold bonds, yours have a 20-year amortization, and then they take a 25% interest rate subsidy off of their <clears throat> cost of funds. And so that's how the 1.55 is derived. If we look at your pro forma, I know these are small numbers, but uh, we show what your existing debt looks like. We also show the projected issuance and then the debt service reserve fund deposits. But I think this may actually show it a little bit better. The navy blue color highlights what the existing debt is for the PUB, and the green shows, should this be approved today, what the aggregate debt service would look like. And with that, we um, make a recommendation that the PUB and the City Commission consider approving this bond issue, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? A motion for approval on the utility side. Do I have a second? Oh, we 
guess I'm part of the utility. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, uh, for, uh, for both <laughs> items A and B, which is the order and the resolution of the 18 million revenue bonds. I second. All in favor? I'll call for a vote on the utility. All in favor say aye. 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 And as far as the city commission, we also need a, a motion mm -hmm. for the order and the ordinance. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Ann. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, I was remiss, I should have introduced Noel Valdez with McCall, Perkhurst, and Horton, who serves as your bond council. Thank you. There being no further business, we do have a motion to adjourn the utility. Second, all in favor say aye. Thank you. How's your mom and dad? How's your mom and dad? They doing good?
I don't see the uh, packets in the drop box. Can they also load them? Yeah. Oh, there's Oh, there it is. I've done that yesterday. Only the workshop packet. Maybe it's just taking a while to load. It says joint meeting. We haven't synced it. Let's just sync first. There it is. Somebody write. I'm always writing something. Right, Omar? Ron? Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, meeting. Uh, we have. The Pledge of Allegiance and then the Evocation by Commissioner Omar Quintanilla. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, we give you thanks and praise for this great day. We thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that you provided our city and our residents. We pray for wisdom as we conduct today's meeting, that the best decisions be made, and that all we do, we give glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> okay, and before we start, a big congratulations to our uh, city, McAllen. We were in Houston last week, and we were fortunate. Uh, the commission presented, uh, because last year we were city commission of the year, so the commission presented, and ladies and gents, you all did fantastic. Thank you all very much. That was excellent. And then we also had some other great news. Uh, the city of McAllen won the Municipal Excellence Award for Management Innovation. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to put it up before I break it. <laughs> Proclamations, we have National Code Compliance Month by Commissioner Cabeza de Vaca. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Proclamation, State of Texas, County of Hidalgo, City of McAllen. Whereas code enforcement officers provide for safety and welfare of the citizens throughout the United States through the enforcement of local codes or ordinance facing various issues of building, zoning housing, animal control, environmental, health, and life safety. And whereas code enforcement officers often have a challenging and demanding role and often do not receive recognition for the job that they do in improving living and working conditions for residents and businesses of local communities. And whereas code enforcement officers are dedicated and highly qualified professionals who share the goals of preventing neighborhood deterioration, enhancing and ensuring safety and preserving property values through knowledge and application of housing, zoning, and nuisance codes and ordinance. And whereas code enforcement officers are called upon to provide quality customer service and excellence to the residents and business of the communities in which they serve. And now, therefore, I, Jose Pepe Cabeza de Vaca III, City Commissioner of the City of McAllen, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me and on behalf of the Mayor and the City Commission, do have right proclamate the month of October as National Code Compliance Month. Congratulations, Please. guys, and thank you for being Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners, and City Managers. Thank you for recognizing our team of dedicated, hardworking code enforcement officers and administrative staff standing before you today for National Code Enforcement Month established by the American Association of Code Enforcement. These fine public servants persevere daily 
enforcing overgrown grass, zoning concerns, mosquito control, food safety concerns, vehicles parked on grass, junked and abandoned vehicles, oversized vehicles in residential areas, illegal dumping and accumulation of, de of debris, noise complaints, permit renewals, blocked water meters, just to name a few. We are truly honored to be recognized for National Code Enforcement Month for the first time in the city's history, acknowledging the challenging and demanding roles each employee has in preservation of our neighborhoods and protecting our quality of life. Thank you. Now, Mayor Pro Tem Joaquin Zamora will present National Community Planning Month. Mayor, before Mayor, before he starts, I, I just want to just say that code enforcement is a tough job. They they get to do some of the things that that we we hear and and they have to go out there and and, and face our public and our residents and i i really truly believe that they they it, it is a job, very unsung heroes here uh in in trying to keep ordinances and trying to keep our our um, community as, as safe as possible and as clean as possible. So I want to commend them because they do a very, very hard job, <coughs> and uh, and they perform, uh, they form, they, they perform their duties in, in sometimes with a lot of stress. That's so. correct, and I think all the commission agrees. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Board of Commissioners. Good afternoon, everybody. And of course, not to be outdone, we have uh, Mr. Edward Garcia and members of the City of McAllen Planning Department uh, giving me the opportunity to read this proclamation, the State of Texas, County of Hidalgo, City of McAllen, whereas change is constant and affects all cities, towns, suburbs, counties, boroughs, townships, rural areas, and other places, and whereas community planning and plans can help manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work and live. And whereas community planning provides an opportunity for all residents to be meaningfully involved in making choices that determine the future of their community. And whereas the full benefits of planning requires public officials and citizens who understand, support, and demand excellence in planning and plan implementation. And whereas the month of October is designated as National Community Planning Month throughout the United States of America and its territories, and whereas the American Planning Association endorses National Community Planning Month as an opportunity to highlight how planning is essential and how planners can lead communities to equitable, resilient, and long-lasting recovery. Now, therefore, I, Joaquin Samuara, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of McAllen, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me, and on behalf of our City Mayor and the Board of Commissioners for the City of McAllen, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Community Planning Month. Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Commissioners. You know, um, as planners, our job is to ensure a great quality of life for everybody, specifically through proper development. Um, it's a tough job, right, because we deal exclusively with people's properties, and that in and of itself is an inherently touchy subject. Um, what I can't say is that we bring easy decisions before you, because they're not, right? There's usually some difficult aspects to it, um, but you guys take it with stride. And what I can say, though, is my staff here uh, works hard to make sure that we can help as many citizens as possible and kind of guide them through the uh, tough process of development, whether they want to build their home, open up a new business, uh, or develop a piece of property. Uh, and so t to that end, I'm very happy and very lucky to have a passionate group of people, uh, a great team that always works hard, again, to make sure that McAllen is still the best city here in South Texas. Thank you. One more thing. Sorry. Um, I do want to recognize somebody who has been here for four decades with the department, with the city. He's a great public servant, a great planner, Luis Mora. Yeah. 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 Years, David. Would you like to say a couple of words, Mr. Mora? Please. I, th I think you've earned that distinction. <laughs> Well, I, I, it seems like just yesterday you get started, and before you know it, time flies by. 
never intended to be here more than a couple of years before I moved on. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I think the Lord has doors that he opens and closes them, and this door opened up, and I thank him and give him the glory. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Giga Maggie's. <laughs> Welcome horns. <laughs> well, we can't call the next item because they're taking pictures. We'll wait a little bit. And, and, and then, uh, Mayor is a great group of guys. Oh, yeah. Great group of guys. I, I had the honor to, to serve with them for 12 years. And uh, six as a chairman in, in the planning and zoning, and he's just uh, very professional. Is people that really care about our community and, and that try to do the, the development process. They know us very as easy as, as they can. Every property is different, and we encounter problems, but they do their best to serve our community. They are the best. Now we'll call item number two, public hearings. We'll open a public hearing. <laughs> one of, yeah, this one, that's the commissioners. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, tonight we have one rezoning and two CUPs listed under routine. As always, they come with a favorable recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, and had no opposition. They can be approved with one motion or can be um, discussed separately as may be desired. They are a rezoning from C3L to C3 at 3501 Buddy Owens Boulevard, a conditional use permit for one year for a bar at 2000 Nolana, that's for Calandrias, and a conditional use permit for one year for a bar at 2210 North 10th uh, named La Chingada. Uh, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anybody here it. to speak against the items? If not, do I hear a motion to motion, approve? Motion to approve? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. <laughs> okay. Then we have three zonings. Well, one. Yes. Uh, so B1 has been withdrawn as well as B2. And uh, B3, which is rezoning from R1 to R3A at 2400 Oxford Avenue, um, that one has not been heard by Planning and Zoning Commission, so we recommend tabling it until PNC is given. Do I hear motion to table? table. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. 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 <coughs> conditional use permits. Yes, sir. So this is a conditional use permit on behalf of Machiavellian Properties for a life of the use for a parking facility. Um, at 901 Kennedy Avenue. So this property is located on the south side of Kennedy, uh, approximately 300 feet east of 10th. It is currently zoned R1. Adjacent zoning is R1 to the east and west, as well as south and C3 to the north. Uh, surrounding uses include single family homes, commercial plaza, and doctor's offices. Is uh, any, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, just the applicant is proposing to oh, uh, do a parking lot for a complete family foot care clinic, which is down south. Um, it had already been used as a parking facility for La Quinta uh, across 10th, and they're just reusing it for that. There was no opposition, and it was heard at October 5th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. No, uh, again, no opposition, and unanimously recommended. Do anybody in the public speaking against this item? If not, do I have a motion to approve? To approve? No motion to approve. Oh, they're doing a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Okay. And this next item will remain tabled. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to amend the zoning ordinance of the city of McAllen? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. End of public hearing. Consent agenda. Is there any? We have items A through E. Is there any items that need to be removed? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Motion passes. Item number four. Boy. 4A, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, is consideration and approval of construction documents by Megamorphosis for Quinta Mazatlan Palm House, which is the uh, presentation you heard at workshop. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Commission. As presented in workshop, this um, item is uh, seeking approval uh, to move into the bidding phase of the project. So the consulting firm, the architects, Megamorphosis, has completed the construction document phase of the project. Um, they have submitted um, a project for the uh, park and ride as a base bid one. 
for the transit department um, that will be FTA funded as, at an estimated cost of $3.7 million. They have also submitted as a base bid for the uh, Center for Urban Ecology and Palm House at $17.5 million. And additional um, ad alternates that totaled $8 million. These ad alternates include the West Wing, um, an amphitheater, a skywalk bridge, palm roof terrace, and an additional um, west side landscape area. Uh, there was a short presentation made at workshop today that uh, showed the location of, of those items. Staff is recommending approval of the construction documents and is seeking approval to proceed to the bidding phase for this project. Commission? So moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. Thank you. Item B. B is consideration and approval of the acceptance of Texas Department of Transportation routine airport maintenance well, program. That's just a grant. I move to approve. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Motion carries. Item C. C is contract for runway 1432, phase three. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Staff is concurring with FAA and our engineering consultant in the recommendation to award this contract to the lowest bidder, NM Contracting out of McAllen, Texas. The recommended action is that a partial award be made for the completion of phase three and phases 4A and 4C in the amount totaling $20,129,254.20. The total contract time proposed is 415 calendar days. NM Contracting is the current contractor for phase one and two of this uh, project. Their current schedule in indicates that they are 319 days over schedule on these phases. Despite the contractor's scheduled delays, FAA requires that an award be made to the lowest bidder and that funding be fully expended within four years of award. 91% or about 18 million point, 18.4 million of this project as uh, will be reimbursed through FAA grants and 9.5% or approximately 1.7 million of the project will be reimbursed through PFC funds. At this moment, I'll answer any questions that any of you all may have. So in phase one and two, they're behind about a year? They're behind about 319 days. Do we get into any issues about, uh, I understand this might be the lowest bidder, and I know the company, they've done well throughout, but what about being a responsible bidder or all that type of So we have coordinated the review of all the bidding documentation, and FAA has considered them the lowest responsive responsible bidder. So they decide, not us. Um, they they ins they um, make certain that we abide by grant assurances, and so in this particular project, uh, they have concurred with the recommendation that it be awarded to the low bidder. Uh, our our um, options are if we don't want to award uh, to this low bidder to go out for bids again, um, but because it's a four-year time frame and it is a, a project that um, has multiple years of work in it. Um, I, I don't want to run into any um, danger of not being able to use the funds. In but do the, we have in the other contracts the issues of liquidated damages? And everything? The contract protects us in that manner, and I suspect that we'll be working with our legal team on the current phase one and two projects, um, and we're hoping not to run into that issue. Okay. With this Commission? Week. Mayor, I'm abstaining from this item, declaring a conference. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. D is consideration to negotiate with the top-ranked consultant firm for aviation marketing and consultant services. Uh, Mayor, Commission, uh, the Department of Aviation has solicited proposals for consideration of marketing air, uh, and consulting for the selection of an aviation marketing and consulting service firm. Pollux Castor has been the top ranked firm. There were five submittals that were received. And after review of the evaluation committee's recommendation, we are recommending that we give, are given authorization to negotiate a master contract agreement that we can bring back to you. The scope of services that we're proposing is a brand strategy and creative campaign planning, media buy management, production of social media and digital management, as well as graphic design and special event support. Thank you. Any questions, issues? If not, do I hear a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. You'll you bring the proposal back to us, right? Uh, we're, we're negotiating a master contract, negotiating fees and rates, and then we're bringing that back to you all. You want to check it out. Thanks. Yes. Ease consideration approval of contract amendment number three for runway 1432 taxiway A. 
Correct. Um, uh, Mayor and Commission, this is the second part of that, uh, of item 4D or 4C, excuse me. We're recommending award of a contract management agreement uh, with K, or excuse me, yeah, a, a construction management agreement with KSA engineers. This would be contract amendment number three. Um, the overall scope includes construction management, resident project representation, and construction material testing for the runway safety improvement project construction phase three, four A, and four C. The total amount of this contract is one million two hundred forty eight thousand eight hundred forty six dollars. A hundred percent of this project costs are covered by the FAA grant. Do I hear a motion to approve? I move. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Thank you. I don't have. <coughs> Mayor and Commissioners, <clears throat> G is consideration of new proposed refresh 5050 zone. You uh, heard a, uh, did I skip something? Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll come back to it. Part. I'm sorry. So I'll come back to it. <laughs> uh, we had a presentation on how we're doing with 5050 and we recommended some changes, some additions to some of the uh, corridors. And so we recommend approval of those recommendations as well as what was suggested by the commissioner. Do I have a motion to approve as stated during the workshop? Second. Thank you. Print. Motion. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Yes. Item carries. Item F. Sorry. Uh, consideration approval of change order number one for Crockett Skate Park. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners. Yes, uh, the Parks Department is looking for um, consideration and approval for change order to the construction of Crockett Skate Park. Uh, there was a 15% increase in the materials cost, so which will be which falls in the range of the 25%. So we're looking to approve um, and recommend the uh, change order to Spawn Ranch for the new contract. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Motion passes. Thank you. Well, let me make a real quick statement real quick. I think a lot of the times we go kind of fast, but it's a good thing. I think most of the commission, when they get here, they've read it, they're prepared. And as far as the community, the people, everything that we have here, our residents have it. They can just go to our website and they have the whole packet. So in case they ever want to look at what we have, they have also the same time frame we do, 72 hours plus. So anytime you have any issues, uh, just go to the website and, and take a look at the packet. Now, our intent is, look, we're trying to get our staff to their family as fast as possible. So thank you, Commission, for always being prepared. And if anybody needs to see the information, it's in the, the website. Item number five. 5A is consideration and possible approval of an ordinance reducing the yard requirements for double fronting lots. Uh, Commission, this uh, ordinance came out of the developer's town hall. We had a couple of weeks ago uh, in that town hall, we discussed the issues that developers have with double fronting lots uh, and the constant request for variances. So out of that uh, discussion, it was recommended we remove the requirement of double fronting lots. And so that's what we have before you. Um, for those lots that we do remove, the rear setback will be whatever corresponds to their zoning. Um, October 5th, Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval. We recommend approval as well. Motion, Motion for to common approve. sense. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Motion passes. Item 6. 6A six is a variance. Consideration of variance request to allow a half street at the proposed Campo de Sueños 2 subdivision at 8300 North Ware Road. Yes, sir. So Campo de Sueños 2 is part of a plan unit development uh, that was approved a couple of uh, meetings ago. It's located on the east side of North Ware, approximately 1,000 feet north of Auburn. Um, this specific phase measures about nine and three quarter acres and has 46 lots. Uh, in total, Campo de Sueños has 173 lots. Um, the engineer on behalf of the developer is requesting a variance to allow North 33rd to be built as a half street. Uh, specifically, the request would allow the developer to build a portion of the road at 25 feet wide, so that allows for uh, two lanes of traffic with curb and gutter on the west side. Uh, it was presented at the October 5th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. It does come with a favorable recommendation from staff and from PNZ. Any issues, questions? Mr. Garcia, if approved by this board today, who would pay, who would pay for the other half? So the owner of the other side, which is currently the city. Okay. And is there any anything in the foreseeable future that if the... Um, if this motion were to be granted, mm -hmm. that the city would come along and just make it a full street? Anything that would prevent that, it would just be funding. And then I believe, I uh, may be misspeaking, but I believe there are plans to have that funding. Yes, sir. Yeah, the city, so commission, we are, yeah. the city commission approved the design 
for that road work uh, this past budget. Okay, and is that something that, that uh, Mr. City Manager, you might see actually having at least commenced before the completion of this fiscal year, like before next September? Our project or? Our, our project. Not no, that. it won't be this year. Uh, in fact, what we did, what we discussed during budget is that it would be multiple years. Yeah. This year, we're gonna we're gonna need probably the whole year to do the design, and possibly the following fiscal year we could do the, the street. What's the length of this half street again? Um, it is about eight hundred and fifty feet, more or less. The, the concern I have, and you have to go back to city history, it's uh, North 29th Street between Vine and I think as far north as maybe La Vista or even as far north as, um, yeah, La Vista. For many years, that street was a half a street, <clears throat> and it almost took an act of God to finally complete it. And I know that the issue there was obviously the side on um, the Seguin side or east side of the street had already completed, but there had never been any developer cost inputted to put it in the curb and gutter and the street mm -hmm. on the west side. Uh, I think you might have that recollection, Roy. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you're right. And, 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 I, and I know on this one it's, it's on the city, but, but I think, you know, if the developer in all likelihood would complete the half a street, uh, you know, within the foreseeable, I guess, the next year or even year and a yes. half, uh, that the city do the same so they wouldn't have this problem. As I understand that this is part of the north future North 33rd Street that's going to come in. I also understand this fiscal year the city is already uh, looking at making improvements to the Trenton Auburn 33rd Street intersection. And I know that that 800 plus feet is not going to take it all the way to Incarnate Word, but I do understand that it is part of a development core or capital improvement project in the future. And maybe as we progress northward and more of these subdivisions come online to. Yeah, at least we have a full street as opposed to a commission. Let's put it in the workshop. Uh, yes, we, sir. Can, we can discuss we'll that. that. Thank now, you. Now, did I have that right? Did we just do the design? Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. 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 Well, yeah, we'll, we'll bring it back. Okay. Motion okay. to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? The motion carries. Okay. From city manager's report. And, and I have recluded myself from that discussion. Okay. Uh, 7A is Immigration and Respite Center report. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, this last week we saw a decline in the number of immigrants dropped off here in the McAllen area. As compared to mid-3000s, the week before this last week we were at 2,584 dropped off. The numbers so far this week look to be quite a bit lower than that. In fact, we may be under 1,500 for this current week. Last week, 269 of those dropped off tested positive for COVID-19. That gave us a 10.4% positivity rate for the week. We expect that number to be about the same here for the current week. Work continues at Anzal Duas Park in cooperation, of course, with Hidalgo County and Precinct 3. Our capacity remains at about 1,500. Our highest occupancy number last week was 340 for one night, and that number today is a little bit over 130. In total, Catholic Charities estimates they have about 400 individuals in quarantine throughout the area with the understanding, of course, that not all of those individuals are COVID positive. You may have also noticed a great deal of activity out at the park recently. At last count, I think we had eight governors, three U.S. senators, two congressmen, and one United Nations representative out there over the last two weeks. Uh, so it's been a little bit busy. Photo ops. We also saw a federal court of appeals decision here a couple of weeks ago that will keep Title 42 in place until at least January of 2020, and that's a good thing for local numbers. Along with all the cities along the U.S.-Mexico border, we're listening very carefully to information on the various caravans that are currently south of the border in relation to where and when they may decide to cross. Aside again, of course, from the various federal, state, and county agencies, we continue to work closely with Catholic Charities, Salvation Army, American Red Cross, and of course, our partners at Hidalgo County. And I'm happy to answer any questions. The only concern is the failure to lift 42 usually <laughs> ties into the bridge opening too. Correct. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much. Okay, future Thank agenda you. items. North 29th Street. Or 33rd Street. 33rd Street. Okay. <laughs> and then, Roy, I know we had gotten a list of the properties we owned, and uh, if we can get a list that we can read, because if we have a lot of surplus properties that we don't need or we can get rid of, put them on the tax base, that would be a lot more beneficial than having properties that we may never utilize. 
so we can get it, but a little bigger where we can read it. Okay. Well, we'll make a recommendation on on what we think might be yeah. good okay. to sell. Okay. List of properties. And item number eight: table items. Any uh, anything else? Anything else? Anybody? Okay. okay. Number eight. Item A. Eight A. Is it ready to come off? We recommend we remove from the table. Motion to remove from table. Item okay. A. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Motion is removed. <coughs> this item is change order number one, and it's a deduct change order um, to the contract that we have with um, RDH contractors. It would remove the contract um, quantities for the Martin Avenue stormwater improvements, uh, $596,953, and would deduct 112 calendar days. In addition, it would remove the Comesa Avenue and North 11th Street drainage improvement project in the amount of $336,408 and will deduct 84 calendar days. These are two projects that the contractor has not yet started, and so we're recommending removing them from their contract and um, going out for bids for those projects. Um, what is added um, is there was material that was delivered to the site in the amount of $24,161.83. So that brings the revised deduct amount to $909,199.17. For a revised contract of $372,927.83 and a revised contract time of 77 calendar days. And staff recommends. Um, Do I hear a motion to approve? Yeah. The, the materials that were delivered were for the project removed or for the first one that he was doing? It was for um, the Martin Avenue stormwater project. They had already ordered um, some material and it was a very little amount, but there were some boxes that were special to the project that will be reused. Yeah, well, we, we retain those, right? We retain them, yes, okay. sir. Well, they get delivered to us. Okay. Are, are they going to be... Maybe the word storage is not appropriate. Where are they going to be storage. located? At Public Works. We, oh, we will end up storage. storing them at Public okay. Works, yes. Yeah, unfortunately, we had to take this action, but uh, uh, yes, those boxes were there, and it's much better for us to keep them somewhere else other than at the location because they were a little obstructive uh, where they were at. Motion to approve change order number one. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Thank you. Item B. B is consideration of variance request. Does this come off the table? Okay. Motion to remove from table. Item 8B. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. De La Torre subdivision is a one lot uh, quarter acre subdivision on 8th Street, approximately 300 feet north of Houston. Uh, as part of this subdivision, we are requesting dedication for a future Galveston Avenue connection. Um, as well as the escrow for improvements for sidewalk, paving, and drainage improvements. Uh, the estimated cost for these improvements are about twenty thousand. Uh, the variance request by the applicant is to break the escrow amount into three annual payments, with the first one being due on signing of the contractual agreement. Uh, <clears throat> staff from various departments reviewed the request, and we are recommending approval, which would be option one. Any questions, issues? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. All against? Motion passes. Uh, we've convened an executive session, or actually in the workshop. So, uh, council item number A. Mayor, I recommend the commission uh, consider a motion to authorize the city attorney to proceed as I described in executive session. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Motion carries. Item B. Uh, with respect to item 9B, Mayor, I recommend no action. Thank you. Item C. With respect to item C, I recommend the city uh, commission entertain a motion to authorize the city attorney to take all action necessary to enforce various aspects of the city zoning ordinance and with respect to the property I described in executive session, including it up to filing a lawsuit seeking injunctive relief. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Item D. Mayor, with respect to item D1 and D2, I respect, uh, I recommend the city commission take no action at this time. Okay, there being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. It's not on the agenda. Oh. They, didn't, they didn't get it in your package. Did we miss so something? It wasn't on the agenda. Regular city commission meetings are held on the second and fourth Monday of each month. 
Meetings are rebroadcast on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on the McAllen Cable Network. Three one one or nine five six six eight one thirty one eleven to submit a request. McAllen three one one. Your connection with the city of McAllen.